Hi everyone! It's Anna. I'm back. I um, Maybe I'll start doing a little Tuesday video video thing for you guys. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, anyway, I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about sight reading and music. Um, a lot of my students have their youth orchestra auditions coming up and a lot of them are like me um, in that they are all freaking out about sight reading. Or I used to freak out about sight reading. Now I'm a little more calm about it. Um, but it's kind of a scary thing. It's like you're looking at music for the first time that you've never seen and there's people watching you and you're like, oh my gosh, I hope I don't make a, you know, crazy mistake in front of these awesome people who are listening to me. And it can be kind of a scary, vulnerable experience. Um, so I just wanted to walk you through really quick what I call the five pillars, well, my hand's super big, Ooh, the five pillars of sight reading. Um, and this is something I learned a long time ago and a lot of my students, it's really helpful for them. It's helpful for me when I'm sight reading stuff. Um, just to remember what to look for before you just dive in blindly on a hope and a prayer and hope that you can make it through this example. So the five pillars are an acronym. I think it's an acronym. Um, I can't remember from English class back in the day, but anyway, I think it's an acronym and the word is stars and each of the letters and stars stands for a different pillar, um, a different musical concept to remember before you start sight reading something. So the first S stands for signature, which in music would be the key signature and the time signature. Always check the key signature. I can't tell you how many times I've had students that are like, they just dive into something and then they're like, oh, I didn't even know there were sharps in this. It's like, surprise. So S is also for surprise. <laughs> um, so check your key signature and check your time signature. Um, second letter, T for tempo. Always check what the tempo of the piece is. Is it allegro? Is it fast? Is it andante? Slow? Is it moderato? Um, if there's not a tempo marking there and you're in an audition, the um, audition uh, judges may give you a tempo um, or you may just have to create your own tempo based on what the word is that you see. Um, so that's tempo. Uh, let's see what's next. S-T-A. A is for accidentals. Um, so oftentimes in a piece of music, I'll just pull something up here as an example. So you've got your key signature, say you're in the key of G major, like this lovely piece. Um, this piece by, this concerto by Telemann. Um, and you're going along and all of a sudden you get to this measure, measure 11. Let's see if you guys can see. I think that's measure 11. And all of a sudden there's some notes that are outside of the key signature, meaning notes that are different. So before you start sight reading, kind of visually scan through the music and make sure that you're finding where some of those added notes are so they don't catch you off guard because that's kind of discomforting. Um, R is for rhythm or rhythms. So go through the music and just look at, you know, are there eighth notes, 16th notes, triplets, rests. Rests are super important to look at. And the last S is kind of a catch-all for everything else that we didn't go through. Um, and it, I just call it symbols. Some people call it signs. And that means dynamics, bowings, um, words, mostly in Italian, uh, like your ritardando, um, your a tempo, your grazioso, things like that. Um, so yeah, maybe one of these days I'll do a little example of me sight reading something if I'm feeling vulnerable. I don't know, but those are some tips for you. So go out and sight read and have fun and I'll see you guys later. Bye.